Hello YouTube, Mr. Report Newsletter and Tutor Chat subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is February the 11th, 2020. And this is a Mr. Report. This is Mr. Report for newsletter number six for 2020. A lot of information to cover. And let's look at the, uh, the coronavirus update before we get started. This is something that I'm keeping an eye on. We had our third in the United States. We had our 13th case this is in San Diego. Over 40,000 the confirmed cases. That number's a lot higher than this. And um, over a thousand dead now, exceeding uh, SARS from 2002-2003. Then um, been talking with Doug, who provided me. I mean, I can give you a testimonial for the. Uh, the nano silver. This is not Doug's nano silver. This is to give you an idea of what Doug is offering you guys. And uh, we just finalized our arrangement yesterday. I've sent him about 10 people so far. And uh, th this is to give you some idea. One of these bottles, nano silver, it's the uh, it's the same concentration. This is 16 fluid ounces. This right here. See the 10 parts. Per million doesn't even say that it's nano silver. There's a difference between just regular colloidal silver and nano silver that gets down into the nooks and crannies, the good stuff. And that's how this is how Doug helped me to kill the bacterial infection that the dentist was afraid she couldn't kill. She had, she had to pull six teeth because she was afraid that she wasn't going to be able to kill it. It was so bad what I had. And um, this is what did it right here. And this right here, Doug has written me. He knows about the bug. This is right up Doug's alley. And he is making a great, great deal for... You have to be a subscriber. If you're one of my subscribers, Doug's going to make this deal for you. Right here. So, he's going to send you two small bottles like this of high concentrate. Enough to make not 16 ounces, not 32 ounces, not enough to make six liters six liters 202 ounces so this is perfect for like Rebecca in the survival group program you know think about it in the survival situation how are you going to kill contagions this is going to kill all kinds of contagions it's a really really great deal it's a really really great solution I recommend it I use it and you can use this as a preventative against the coronavirus or the or the flu bug, the regular flu bug. This is really really a great deal. So before, I mean that's, and Doug is refining his instructions to make things simpler to understand. Send you two bottles. You're going to mix it like I did, in uh, distilled water. And he's going to send you the two bottles to make you 202 fluid ounces. You're not going to mix up this much at one time. Don't do that. And you and you also, um, you're going to make up uh, smaller smaller amounts because you're taking this stuff a teaspoon at a time holding it under your tongue for 30 seconds a teaspoon at a time and you're getting all this I'm telling you this is really really great so uh, rather than anything like you're looking at here this is hundred and twenty nine dollars per 16 ounce bottle that's how great this stuff is it's really really great but if you go to the website right here and click on this donate button, fifty dollars. You send, you donate fifty dollars here at the website, and I'm going to take your information from your PayPal, and I'm going to ship it to Doug, and Doug is going to write you and verify that you make sure that your 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 uh, your mailing address is up to date. You don't want this stuff to go to the wrong place, right? So I'm going to send him the information, and I'm going to take all the orders. He's gonna. I'm gonna send everything to Doug, and he's going to process everything. Just make your solution, make your bottles, put on all the instructions, and ship it to you. This includes the fifty dollars. Includes shipping. Okay. Protect your family. Protect your survival group. Have it on hand. This needs to be part of your survival bug out bag. These two little bottles can make a make two hundred and two ounces and like I say you're using one one uh, the first batch that I mixed up I'm still using I still have almost two full bottles left 
and I've had great, great benefits from using it. So I just want to let you guys know about that. There's no other sign on this website. This is just the don't. You just come and make a $50 donation. And this is for, this is just introductory. Before This is how things are going to start off. Price might go up. So um, well, this is what uh, Doug and I agreed on right now so far. And that's that's how you you uh, that's how you can get it. Click on the donate button right here. That's going to come to me, and then I'm going to ship your information and uh, over to Doug, and he's going to take it from there. He's going to send it to you, just like he sent it to me. Just like he sent in it. Uh, I heard that Rebecca's already got uh, some for the uh, the survival group program. So I wanted to let you to know about that first before we get into this report. This uh, weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight, using his three witnesses of spirit, water, water and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1 through Revelation. And I'll get more into the, uh, the coronavirus after we get through um, this opening report. What I'd like to do is uh, eventually we're going to get in going chapter to chapter, page to page on the Mystery Explained. Until then, then supporters, you guys that are supporting me, you send me questions, and I kind of look at it, at the questions and, you know, the flow of the group, kind of how we're managing things. We're back in the Adam and Eve and in the garden. This is where, mo during our chat, click right here, these chats, you'll notice that many of the questions that are coming to me during our chat sessions are about, they take us right back to the garden in the beginning. And many of the explanations when you ask me a question, whether it's kind of simple or complicated, generally the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a foundation before I begin giving the answer and taking you back to the garden, taking you back to Genesis. Everything begins in Genesis, right? So um, this is um, from Naji. A, um, I hope I'm saying your name right, Naji. Really, really nice guy. And uh, you're going to get know a little bit more about him as he's sharing and uh, he's a really exciting story he reminds me a lot of Brian and Trevor he's gonna be a little bit more advanced and uh, really remind me more of Brian than anybody especially right here at the start okay so brother Terrell I have watched all the mystery reports several times and Brian has said the same thing and those on the black on the black star reports relating to biblical teachings Plus, printed out the material via the Dropbox folder. Wanted to tell you what a blessing and um, what a blessing to have found your ministry on the three witnesses. It's truly hidden in plain sight. And it is, guys, I'm telling you. You want to share this video with other people? They seem like they're kind of long and boring, don't they? When you see it, this is very exciting stuff. It's really, really exciting when you see it. Naji sees it, like Brian sees it, Trevor sees it, and others. Um, so I followed your wisdom on reading the 13 epistles and your book and he's not done yet with that it takes a while to get through my book so over 500 pages 80 color-coded diagrams and you're reading the Pauline epistles three times and you're underlining there's exercises that you're doing to help you to see things that those are things that I've done I did for for, for myself I even you even use the instructions include using different colored pens whenever you're doing your underlining you, you, you get yourself a Bible that's a workbook. I mean, you put, many people think of their Bible as, you know, sacred. And, you know, you have your really nice going to Sunday Bible. I get that. But my Bible, it's got writing all in it. It's got notes over to here and cross-referencing and all kinds. It's, and the columns are just filled with notes and things. Okay. So um, one of the exercises that I did in one of my Bibles was... Go through and read the Pauline epistles and underline every pronoun, the name, every single name that you see, whether it's Paul, Saul, no matter who it is, you underline the name. When you come through the second time and read the Pauline epistles, you just read from Romans to Philemon and you underline the names as you go. When you go through the second time, use a different colored pen because you're going to realize there are names that you, you missed. And that's a tell. That's that you're going to learn something about yourself and what you can see and what you can't see. As you're going through it the second time, you're going to see that you missed something. So you're going to underline those with a different colored pen. And then you're going to do it for the third time. And you're, you're going to find 
pronouns that you missed again. And you're going to underline those with your third colored pen. So that you're doing these exercises, you're doing things for a reason. These are, these are teaching methods that I've used for decades to help people and myself. And um, so if you're really reading my book and you're really doing all the exercises, then it's taking time. You, you, even if you're a speed reader, you are, it's going to take you time to be able to do it. Because sometimes you're doing things in triplicate for a reason. There, and things in the, in the Mystery Explained are laid out according to a numerology, the 20 chapters. Everything's laid out that way. Uh, and everything's for a reason. It's, whenever you just first start reading it, it just looks like a big book, just with pictures and, you know, you don't, you don't see the big picture yet. But when you do all the exercises and by the time you come to that third time, then you're going to, you're, it's going to be like a, like a, a, an explosion of spirit. That's just, just really phenomenal thing whenever you actually follow the instructions, draw out all the diagrams, create your mystery folder. It's going to be red. My book is blue. God's word is gold. You got three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water right there. And that red folder in the middle is the one that's going to keep growing. It's going to keep enlarging, just like all of the blood witnesses of Scripture. Really great program. Hope you'll get my book, The Mystery Explained. When you subscribe, then you're going to get the ebook version of my book for free. Okay, so the question I was wondering about is how Satan anointed the anointed cherub that covers, killed Adam in the infinite realm. Eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil was created in heaven, and then a question mark, and then I understand that, and then question mark. That's a little bit confusing. And I make a point, I make a little note about that, but I can see that Naji's excited about what he's writing about. But it is confusing me when you ask me a question, then you say I understand, but then you have another question mark and then exclamation, exclamation points. So in, uh, in some ways, I mean, people that know me, I have a really high IQ, but in some ways I'm kind of retarded. And the way that my mind works is not the way the regular person's brain works. If you know me for a while, then you kind of realize that I have an efficiency thing. It's, um, I'm, I'm just kind of messed up in some ways, but in a good way. And uh, it's just the way my brain works. Just does, not, does not work. The gears don't work like everybody else's but it helps me to see things helps me be a great researcher helps me see things other people can't see but it also gives me like a disability now i'm trying to think of the word now almost like um i'm not saying that it is autism but it's something that's kind of like that and which makes it gives you a gift in one area but then it takes away from another area you don't have as much common sense but then you'll be you'll be able to, to uh, solve um, a math question in your head real quick and things like that and solve puzzles and things so can you expound on this topic he wants more of the meat not just the milk if you've been around me for a while you've been and you read my book and you then you want you want the you, you want to swim on the deep end of the pool in other words not down the kitty side but if you just start you really need the training wheels on or you, you it's it gets very very difficult so there's a balance there in, in, in this ministry, then the, one of the difficult things for me is, is to help keep those, the, the Brian's and the Najis that are on the deep end of the pool, how, how to keep them um, excited about what's going on while helping the new people that are just coming in the door. That's a problem that my Bible teacher had. That's a problem that she had, that she had a really difficult time. And I was there wanting to meet just like Najee. And that when somebody was new there that was unsaved, Somewhat times people would bring unsaved, so she would do, I mean, a whole whole five-year program was off. It was all about that one person and, and the gospel. And those nights, I was like tapping my finger, tapping my finger, but it wasn't all about me. That was the thing, you know, to realize it was, uh, it was about her ministry, and she was helping people to, uh, you know, to come to the Lord, which was uh, more important. But anyway, so uh, the main question that I'm struggling with is... We are gods in the infinity realm, which which I characterize as the infinite realm. And um, so the infinite realm. Let me just stop here for a second. And I'll, I'll, never mind, I'm going to do that differently. I didn't pull up the diagram that I wanted. Okay, 
Um, does that not conflict with the garden and the serpent that beguiled Eve? I'm not making that connection or lack of understanding at this moment. The point of my rambling is your ministry is like reading the book of John. God bless you. Have a great day. And what he means by that is, and whenever you read scripture, each time you read it, you get something new. Each time you read it. And that happens for me too. I've read the Bible numerous times, read the New Testament more than a hundred times, and I can still read it and see something that I didn't see before. It happens that way. As you get spiritually, as you grow spiritually, you go up higher on the mountain and then you can see better. You have a better view of, every, of the landscape and everything around you, better perspective. When you're down at the base of the mountain looking up, it's difficult to see much of anything. Okay, so this is what I, this is my practice. I like to give you, whatever message you send me, put the whole thing together without chopping it up. I know that I repeat that a lot, but even if you're my debating adversary, then I don't want to get taken an unfair advantage by chopping up your work and giving my comments. I want to, all the readers are our judges. And you present yours, and I want you to present your whole case uninterrupted, and then I'm going to start breaking it apart. And in this case, it's not a debate. This is a question and answer. So then this is the first part. Watched all the videos. Okay, the uh, Satan. I was wondering how Satan, the anointed cherub that covers, killed Adam in the infinite realm. Okay, so this is going to take a little while. I can just blurt out the answer, but but if you don't understand, if you have no concept of what it means to be infinite, and it's very difficult to visualize, then that's where we need to lay down a kind of a foundation, and then re-ask the question, and then you're going to be able to see the, the light a little better. So this is the first, if you've been watching my videos, this is Genesis 1.1. This is the key that breaks God's Bible code. I'm going to begin here a lot of times with people to show them how God created the heaven and the earth. It's really that simple. Spirit, blood, and water. God, heaven, and earth. These are the same three witnesses from John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, which is heaven. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, because God and His Word are one in the infinite realm. They're there right now. Heaven is an incarnation. Earth is an incarnation of Adam who was killed in the infinite realm. In this realm that's right here. Okay. So all things, the creation, the heavens, heaven, and earth of Genesis 1, 6 through 8. That's the spirit, soul, and body of Adam. Spirit, soul, body of Adam. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the spirit, soul, and body of the last Adam, the heavenly Adam, Christ. Christ, this is Christ Jesus right here. Paul writes about Christ Jesus. So there's one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, see the heavenly man, spirit, soul, body? Christ Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as a man. It doesn't mean that he's a human man. It means man that we are familiar with. Man has a spirit, soul, and a body. The spirit witness is number one. The blood witness is number two. The water witness is number three. One plus two plus three, six. Six is the number of man. Man. The man, Christ Jesus, is not, not talking about an earthly man. It's talking about the heavenly man, Christ Jesus. The three witnesses of God, Revelation 1 8. The Almighty. The Lord God, the Almighty. Who is, who was, and who is to come. God to come, God who is, God who was. Three witnesses, just like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just like the heavens, heaven, and earth. Just like you have a spirit, soul, and a body. Okay? Now, for this exercise, that, that's the basic basics of understanding the three witnesses of Scripture. Right there. Now, what we're going to do for Naji is take you back to the infinite realm. This is the only realm that's real. This is a created realm. This is a created realm. This is a realm where we are real. This is where we're all gods. You're a god, I'm a god. That's This is where we live. Now, I see this time and space thing. There's no such thing as time and space here. This, this is beyond the veil, this veil here of time and space. But you see this relationship that the Word has with God? That's how God chooses us in Him before the foundations of the world. Because in their relationship, 
and that's the key in their relationship then what's inside this circle exists before time ever began here see how the earth is kind of out here alone by itself but we have a relationship in time and space with God's word the reason that God this is the son of God right here he's between God and men because he is something between God and men this realm is infinite this realm is almost infinite this realm is finite okay so God must interact with us through his son who's almost infinite that's the only way it's even possible because infinite otherwise could not inter it's like infinite trying to crawl inside a, a drop of water impossible God does it though using his son that's what his words for okay so start at the bottom the son of man diagram the heavens heaven and the earth okay that's Genesis 1 this is the waters above the firmament and the waters below the firmament and the, the or expanse depending on which translation you use and this expanse or the firmament is called heaven Genesis 1 8 so you have a heaven here in Genesis 1 8 and you have the heaven that's over here in Genesis 1 1 they're not the same thing this is heaven this is the highest heaven from 1st Kings chapter 8 start at verse 26 Solomon and David know all about this heaven that's right here and the heaven that's of this universe and for example this whole realm incarnated inside of our heaven right here as the Lamb of God the Lamb of God here incarnated onto the earth as Jesus Christ and then Jesus Christ was raised above all the heavens of this realm and seated next to God here in Christ Jesus seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus Ephesians 2 start at 4 and we're seated here with him in this realm I'll show you that here in just a second okay I like to give a little peripheral information because there's people of different levels that are watching right now and people that are writing me like Brian like Trevor like right Dr. Laura and so I'm trying to put I don't know, milk in there and some meat in there too as we go okay so when you start at the bottom you can see this this is the man of God right here this is the stand-up man version of what you see here in tabernacle form this is like the landscape this is like the portrait right that you have for your settings on your phone or on your you know, turn your phone backwards and forwards you get landscape and you get portrait the upset this is the portrait of this this is the landscape which and from the biblical perspective is the tabernacle form with the veils so if you look at a pitch portrait of the if you're looking down on the temple it looks like a man down to the sidewalks and the five sidewalks branching out to be the fingers I've shown you guys that before is that what we're looking at the temple also has the image of a man with the veils and the three sections corresponding to the spirit soul and the body okay so the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit testifies for the realm of the Word. That's my characterization of what this is. The realm of the Word. It's, a, it's its own realm. It's the kingdom of His beloved Son is what it is. Okay. So, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they testify for the realm of the Word that testifies as the singularity in Genesis 1 1 as heaven so that's what dr. Laura was asking about what do you mean testifies what's that th what does that mean when you know their testimony then they are testifying continuously so whenever you go to Genesis 1 1 and you're reading the passage look at the passageway as a literal passageway that you're walking through you're walking through the passageway right of God's Word the Bible itself is a blueprint of what's in heaven it's a blueprint of New Jerusalem it's a blueprint of Christ Jesus incarnate inside of you too and you realize that more and more as you realize more and more about the incarnations the words incarnations Adam's incarnations God's incarnations incarnations that are inside of you if you're if you have obeyed our gospel God is incarnate inside of you right now incarnate inside of Christ who is inside of you Colossians 1 start at uh, 24 okay so um 
The key to this exercise is to help develop the idea of recognizing God, heaven, and earth as three realms that have members of their individual bodies. Now here, I'm going to put my notes in here. And we're going to read about those that are baptized into Moses. For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers who were under the cloud, all these asterisks, asterisks here, are showing you the water signs. Scripture uses, Paul is using, the Holy Spirit uses water signs in proximity to water witnesses. Spirit signs to spirit witnesses and blood signs to blood witnesses. Right here, Moses is a water witness. So that's why you see those baptized into him, all drinking spiritual food, the sea, the cloud, drinking, water is everywhere. I don't want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers who were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate of the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them and that rock was Christ. Nonetheless, or nevertheless, with most of them God was not well pleased for they were laid low in the wilderness. In fact, every single son of Israel that left Egypt and crossed the Red Sea perished in the wilderness save two. Say a million people went across there. Two made it across the Jordan River into the Promised Land. Two. Joshua and Caleb. Caleb's name meaning dog. That's a type of Christ. The Jordan River is the symbol of the veil between earth and heaven. The Promised Land being heaven on the other side. Okay. The key, the thing to understand is that there are people being baptized into Moses. They were all baptized into Moses. All, Greek word, pas, all. All, no south time, many times the word all, they're all. Okay, so the lesson here is for you to realize that there are members of, Mo of Moses' body, the water witness. And there are also members of Christ's body. That's us. That's those of us who have obeyed the gospel. Some are being baptized into Moses. Some are being baptized into Christ. And there's a missing body there. Once That's what we're going to get to here in a second. Realizing that Moses is another skin for our mother Eve. That's, I know that seems like a, a really long stretch to a lot of people. This is what the three witnesses types teach. Moses is another skin. Genesis 3.21 for our mother Eve, like Noah, Sarah, and Bathsheba, as mother of all living. See, it's this verse, Genesis 3.20, that precedes the verse where Adam and Eve are, it appears that the Lord God is like putting them in skins, like some people imagine, like a saber-toothed tiger, you know, or the Lord God's making them and putting skins on them. That's not what this is, that what's being taught. That's not what scripture says. Everything before Genesis 3.20 is takes place in heaven. They don't need physical walking around on the earth skins. There's no procreation yet. They have to be in skins for that. And I wrote about that yesterday. And that's down in, in this newsletter. More, more, more about what's going on there in the garden. Okay. So... If you, visual, if you can visualize that as Eve, mother of all the living, um, that can help us visualize how and why members are being baptized into the body of Moses. These are members of her seed that originated in Eve and are now being gathered back to Eve, who is Moses. If we are going to understand the concept of being a God in God's infinite realm, this is where David and the Christ call, says, you are gods. He's actually speaking to the sons of Israel, but it's ac applicable to us in God's infinite realm. So if you're going to understand the concept of being a god in God's infinite realm, then we must consider the meaning of being baptized into Moses and being baptized into Christ. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. 
baptized in the body of Moses, baptized in the body of Christ. Can you can you figure out the missing body yet? Think of the Mount of Transfiguration. Okay. I'm assuming you already know the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. Go to their ChristianForums.com. Uh, with some idea of what is being shared in this diagram. See, this is the same picture of Genesis 1-1. Same picture. The difference is we're looking at it from the from the John's perspective over here, this is John in Revelation. And what he sees when he's looking across these realms. This is God's view looking this way. And this is John's view looking this way. So God, heaven, and earth. Spirit, blood, water. See the same thing. Second veil, first veil. All the components are there. Just more details. Okay. Okay. So the kingdom of his, this is the only realm that's real. This is the only realm that's real. This is created, this is created. Just read Genesis 1-1 again to realize God created the heaven and the earth. It's, these are created realms. Anything that's created as a beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And an end. There's going to be a beginning to it and there's going to be an end for it. The cause is always in the infinite realm. The cause heaven was created. The reason that the earth was created came from the infinite realm. This is the only realm that's real. So you're thinking, um, this leads to the question about free will. Yes, it's absolute 100% free will. You have free will. You executed that free will in the infinite realm. Now we're doing things already done. Free will is here where you're a god. It's not over here. We're here doing things that we already done. If you're a good guy over here, you did good things, you thirsted for, to know more, have to, for to know more about God, then you have that thirst here. If you rebelled against God here, you rebel against God here. The choices were made here. Now we're living out the result of those choices over here. Okay, on either side of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus is right here. So standing in John's position, when he looks across, he sees the Lamb in the center of the throne. Boom. The Lamb incarnate. This whole realm incarnate's right here. But then when he looks beyond that, he sees the face of the man. Who do you think that is? The face of the man. The face of the man in Revelation. The face of the man. Who is that? It's Jesus Christ. He was raised above all the heavens, and that's where he's standing. There's got him just to the side here, not dead in the middle, because from where the John looks at it, it appears that he's going to be at the right hand of God, who must interact with us through three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. God to come, God who is, God who was. God who is, represented by the eagle, all-seeing eagle, he sees all things. God who is, sees everything that's happening in the universe, in heaven, at this very instant. His prophet is God to come. His priest is God who was. God who was is the bullock. Try to approach the bullock from behind Especially when you go back into the old days, plowing and things, people, bullock, people that got killed by the bull was usually standing behind them. They got kicked. The lion protects from the front. If the weak spot on the lion is going to be his tail end, nothing approaches him from the front. Nothing approaches from behind. This is the protectors of the throne of the Almighty, who's testifying through the blood witness, just like the Word testifies through the Son. The Almighty testifies through God who is. So whenever, in Genesis 1-1, whenever God says, let us make man in our image, God who is is speaking to God who was and God to come. He's speaking in the moment about creating man in his image, spirit, blood, and water. Okay? So, we obey the gospel of the grace of God to be baptized into Christ's body. That's right here. On the cross to become active participants in his death, burial, and resurrection. Got a little bit ahead of myself there, didn't I? Okay. We are seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Read those verses slowly. I recommend the New American Standard Bible using the critical, using the critical text. This power of God process explains how Christ and us in him ascended far above all the heavens of, this, of the kingdom of this world. Figure 3. Realm 2. Find ourselves in heaven of Genesis 1-1. One, one. 
represented as the kingdom of his beloved son. Figure two. Kingdom of God, kingdom of his son, kingdom of this world. Three kingdoms, spirit, blood, water. Note carefully the body of Moses and the corresponding body of Elijah. Aha, there's your missing body. Body of Elijah. This is where the angels are assembled from the invisible universe. We have the visible universe, our earth, and you have the body of Moses. That's right here in the front. Their angel halves are back here. You take the woman, put her back inside the man. You take the man, put him back inside the angel, and you have an immortal soul that goes to heaven. The marriage supper of the Lamb is about rejoining angels and men into one singularity host, which would be a living soul, like Adam in Genesis 3.21. Um, Genesis 2.7, I should say. In Genesis 3.1, he has Eve on the outside, and they're getting ready to begin procreation. The seed is going to be coming out. Okay, so the, the, the and many people, many people that I debate, I notice that they, for some reason, they believe since Christ died, that, that saves everybody. It doesn't work that way. There would be no reason for God to send the gospel into the world if just Christ dying for everybody meant if his blood could save one soul, apart from the gospel, you see. It's the gospel. This is how... God saves people through the foolishness of the message preached. That's how God decided to do things, and that's how he is doing things. He sends the preacher, you obey the gospel, then you become baptized into Christ's body on the cross. You die with him, you're glorified with him, you're seen in the heavenly places with him, finished product, you've already died. You've already been judged, and you've been judged innocent. Because if God waited around and waited around for men to be good enough to be members of Christ's body, no one would ever make it. It's by his grace that he has a body of Christ. And if you're chosen like Najee, he feels it. Brian feels it. I know. Trevor feels it. You can feel it all around me and those that are seeking to know more about God's living word. And it's really exciting whenever you can see it. But this shows how really, really fortunate we are, how lucky we are to be called, to be members of Christ's body. It's not just about going to heaven. Millions go to heaven. But not millions, not nearly as many as go to heaven are members of Christ's body. That makes you one of the like elite. And then you're even above all of the kingdom disciples, all their priests, all their called by the gospel of the kingdom. 2,000 years ago and in the, the coming day of the Lord, they're all water witnesses. They're all priests. They stand on that sea of glass. They make intercession. They look like they're really big. They even have their own hierarchy. So some are in... The, the way that I look at these priests is kind of like the way I look at chickens. If you ever raise chickens, which I have, I've raised a lot of chickens. And you have a top chicken, the hen, that has the best plumage. She's the best chicken. And then you got the ranking, the pecking order. You know what pecking order is. It goes down the food chain until you get to that chicken that has hardly any tail. Because every other chicken comes by, pulls one of those tail feathers out. The chickens do that to each other. They pull each other's tail feathers out. But the one who's the best chicken, you cannot get a tail feather out of her because she is too quick. She is going to turn around and take three out of yours when you try. That's the way it works. Well, that's the way that these priests are. Some of them are big and more glorious and everything, really, really bright looking. Some of them are, you know, they're demure, they're smaller, they're, they're um, just a percentage of what that glorious, the biggest one is. So I look at it as the big chickens and little chickens in the in the chicken house. But those that are baptized in the body of Moses are standing on that sea of glass out in front. Those of us who are called, and that's through the gospel of the kingdom. We don't preach that gospel today. Only members of Christ's body are being called today. Those left behind at our rapture, they are the ones that are going to be called to become kingdom disciples. But you don't want to wait around. You want to be a member of Christ's body now. I mean, God has to call you. But that's the great position. And all those kingdom disciples, even the ones from the age to come, they're going to be martyred. They think that they're it. They think they're this is as big as it, great as it gets. It's only after they go through the marriage supper of the Lamb, after they join us 
in the Lamb, after they join us in Christ Jesus, they realize that they are late to the party. Israel, all of Israel, is going to be just sick over that. I'm talking about the ones that go through the way, the means of the works, go through the gospel of the kingdom. They lay in hands for the Holy Spirit. They're repenting. They are um, confessing their sins. Water, water baptizing each other. Works of human hands. Works. They're going to come by works. We're going to come by God's grace. And God's going to show his mighty angels that his grace is better than all the works of man and angels combined for all the ages to come. God's grace. It's really that simple. That's the lesson that God is teaching everybody. That we're going to learn before we get back to the infinite realm. And we're not going to be caught up in the satanic type rebellion thing ever again. Okay, so the kingdom of his son, that's two. Kingdom of this world, that's three. Okay, note carefully the body of Moses, corresponding body of Elijah. They're over here. So you have a Holy Spirit elect and a father elect too. And whenever you get down, get start getting more advanced, you're going to realize that these members here, that they're members of this body. That are members here, that are members here, the angels. That have to be reunited to go to heaven with their water witness half. That have a corresponding... It's a little bit complicated, but those that are on the body of Moses, Peter, John, and James, they're standing out here. They have a counterpart here that's almost infinite. They are standing there at the, they're doing the same things. That's on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in the infinite realm. Once you start seeing the larger picture, you're going to realize all these things are connected. They're not only connected on the outside. They are connected within you. Because this realm, this entire realm, if you're a member of Christ's body like me, this entire realm is incarnate inside of you. The whole realm, Christ in you, the hope of glory, this mystery among the Gentiles, is heaven of Genesis 1-1, incarnate inside of you. And inside of that, God has reconciled the world to himself. This realm is inside of this realm, inside of you. So, Moses testifies for the Eve half. Elijah testifies, Adam, for the angels half. Elijah testifies for the Adam half, which is the angels. That's the reason that Elijah did not see death. He was taken to heaven in the chariot of fire, remember? That's 2 Kings chapter 2, start 10. Moses, getting ready to go into the promised land. Thinking that, well, it's going to be Joshua, Caleb, and Moses... Nope. Lord God came and broke bad news. You're not allowed to go over there. You can go up on the mountain. You go up and look and you can see it. But you cannot go there. Why? Because Eve, mother of all the living, water witness, must see death. People walking around the earth today, they have to die to go to heaven. You don't just go to heaven. Elijah was allowed to go to heaven. But Elijah is the exception to the rule because he represents all the angels. That's the types that I'm talking about. Spirit witness types. That's why Elijah did not see death. There are only two exceptions in the Bible of those who didn't see death. Then, uh, let's see here. Try to, Okay. So let's try to expand our thought processes, processes on the concept of being baptized into Christ to help us to gain some idea of how God, God's in God's infinite realm also incarnate inside of their brethren. Now that's the important thing to realize and it's very difficult to teach people. Telling you from experience. In the infinite realm, we incarnate inside of one another. That's what we do. So it makes us, we're all created looking identical. It's whenever our brother, and we're created with members inside of our body. Infinite members inside of our body. But then our brethren begin to incarnate inside of us, too. And they begin interacting with the, the hosts that are already inside of us. As gods, remember, we're infinite. When we start incarnating inside of one another, then what we do is we take our brethren and we position them in the way we desire. Just like God places us in Christ's body the way he desires, we are in the God position in the infinite realm regarding our anatomy, regarding our own infinite body that is like a universe all to itself. And our brethren incarnate inside of it and we are in the very center of ourselves. We have a giant room and a giant table. 
and we take our brother and say, hey, Najee, you go here at my right hand. Brian, Trevor, right? Right on right on down the line. And then you've got people that you, know, you really, really just don't like. They go on your left side. Those are the ones that you don't listen to so much. If you, got, if you need an opposing view on something, you go over there and ask them. Otherwise, you're getting your advice, your counseling from those on your right side. So I'm going to put people on my right side different than you are. That's what gives us our individual personalities. So it makes us different. Otherwise, we'd all be identical like drones. It's our choice that makes us different in the infinite realm. Okay, and It's important to understand that because we're going to understand how the first son of God was murdered. Okay, for even as one, even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we are made to drink of one spirit. You see how this corresponds to what it just said, the body of Moses. They all drank of the same, right? Spiritual drink. We're drinking of the same spirit. Spiritual drink. For the body is not one member but many. The thing to realize about when you're reading Revelation and you see the Lamb in the center of the throne, think of right here. For the body is not one member but many. Note the comparison that Paul makes here to made to drink of one spirit in the same way from the body of Moses. God is giving us clues about features and characteristics shared by members of Christ's body, the body of Moses, all living, and most importantly for this exercise, God's body in the infinite realm. Here's a vital clue shared by Paul addressing the Romans. He says, For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Try to contemplate what that means. We are individually members of one another. Because that takes us back to the infinite realm, where we are indeed members of one another. We incarnate inside of each other. Christ is teaching the golden rule, just like God in the infinite realm does, through his word. That you treat your brother in the way you want to be treated, and I mean literally treated. Because, think about it for a minute. I incarnate inside of you and you incarnate inside of me. How well am I going to treat the incarnation that's inside of me? Of you. How well are you going to treat me, my incarnation that's inside of you? Think about how this plays out amongst all of our brethren. I treat you good, you treat me good. You, you do something bad to me, something bad happens to the incarnation of you that's in me. Okay, think about the different scenarios that can take place here. So the new key for opening the doors into God's infinite realm appear in the words and individually members of one another. Moses, Eve, and Elijah, Adam have men, angel halves being restored to become living souls in this earth universe. Everyone here is a member of Adam's body, like everyone in heaven is a member of Christ's body. Now that's on the righteous side. And I'm starting right here, beginning, going to begin here at we, but I want to show you that diagram. I did have that, that one pulled up. And let's see if we can zoom in just a little bit, make it just a little bit bigger. Because you're looking at the same thing that you're looking at in all these diagrams. The earth, see the heavens, heaven, and the earth, and then heaven. But heaven has two sides. There's a righteousness side, and there's an unrighteous side. This is where the mystery of Christ is taking place. We're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our lives are hidden with Christ inside of God. But there's an antithesis doctrine here. The mystery of iniquity. The 666 man. We're part of the 777 man. Elijah, Christ, Moses. We're members of Christ's body. Right here in this red thingy here. But there are also members walking around that are members of this six body right here. He who has wisdom, he will understand that 666 is the number of a man. That man is nothing to walking around on this earth. That man is a heavenly man, just like 777, heavenly man, Christ Jesus. 666, heavenly man. Because this is the man that's in power in the heavenly places. Members are in this body. The body of the devil, the body of the antichrist, the body of the false prophet. They come at different times. 
They're incarnate on the earth at different times. Right now, the kings, the rulers, the judges are on the earth. Go to the Old Testament times, and you're going to see the prophets. Whenever Elijah, when he, he was back there battling, Elijah is the spirit witness, and he's battling with the prophets of Baal. Chopped off all their heads in one day when they couldn't call down the fire of the Lord like he could. So these that are infinite realm hosts, they have they have they they have a host and incarnation in heaven too. The battle between the dragon and Michael the archangel is being fought there. See. Satan cast down by Michael and his angels are down into here. He cut off the dragon's head. That happened even as Adam was being created back in Genesis 2-7. Heaven, from our perspective, this almost infinite realm here is frozen motionless because the hosts are almost infinite. The hosts are almost infinite. The hosts here are infinite. So all these ages go by, ages, 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 ages. Looking through the second veil, the scene never changes. Now, there's a veil between us and heaven, too. Our time goes by. This time passes extremely, extremely slowly. It's moving. But the second hand only ticks every few hundred years or something. It's moving like the constellations moving in the sky. Very, 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 very slowly. Compared to this entire creation is like a drop of water, even compared to heaven. And both heaven and earth are less than a drop of water compared to the infinite realm. But this is how God restores a God that's been murdered. He creates this false, this is an illusion. Time and space, heaven and earth are all illusions. They're not real. These are incarnations. The same way that we incarnate inside of one another in the infinite realm, we are incarnating here. And when you're in the earth, you're an incarnation of an incarnation. Right? So this is to kind of give you a picture so that heaven has two sides. Like here we have, everything is in duality here. Light and dark and all that. For a reason. Because you have sons of darkness and you have sons of the light. Sons of disobedience, sons of obedience. Victims in the infinite realm and perpetrators. Those that worked with Satan to murder us. And like I said before, all of our decisions were made in this infinite realm. We're here for the purpose of judgment. For a man to die once and then the judgment. That's what we're here for. Seventh-day people. And of six-day people, they're not here for judgment. They're all members of Adam's body on the day he was made. They were all killed on the day he was Satan killed him. They're all victims. All six-day people. Chinese. Aborigines. American Indians. Everybody with the RH positive. Beardless races. They're primarily beardless. Unless they interact with the seventh-day people. So we're the bearded race, the, be the bearded races. Okay, so this is a picture in the book. Helps you to see the domain of darkness. This is where we are now. Then this evil age down here. The six six heavenly man are passing away. Here comes New Jerusalem, the seven 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 man. But whenever during the day of the Lord is coming up, when we sit in those heavenly places, we're going to be sitting in these heavenly places, vacated because all the members of this body are chained. So if our ship up here in New Jerusalem is like the Enterprise, if you're a Trekkie, you know what I mean. Starship Enterprise. And then this, the seats we sit in here, when we are pushing the levers, helping Elijah restore all things, it's like it's like a Klingon warship. It's just not the same. Our butts just don't fit in those chairs just quite right. When we get up into here, the chairs we made just for us. Here, we're going to occupy a seat that was made for somebody else. And they're going to be chained while we're using their levers to help Elijah restore all things. God's doing that. Okay, so we take these teachings to then understand how we are also members of God's body in the infinite realm, where God is infinite. God is infinite, all big letters. Everything God ever makes will fit on the tip of his little finger, although everything he makes is infinite. In the infinite realm, heaven and earth are temporary creations put here for the purpose of judgment. 
So we take these teachings to understand how we are also members of God's body in the infinite realm, where, and each member of his body is also infinite. Okay, return to figure one of the diagram above to realize God's infinite realm is the only realm that's real. Heaven and earth are mere incarnations of God's word, heaven, son of God, and Adam, the earth, the son of God. There's only one son of God on the earth. Everybody else is adopted as sons. The son of God is Adam, period. That's all there is. The entire earth is only one son of God. And that is the heavens, heaven, and earth. The heavens where the angels are, that's his spirit. Heaven is his soul. The visible universe is his body. There's only one son of God. We are incarnate. We are members of Adam's body. We died with him in the infinite realm when he was murdered. Yeah, you're a God, but you're in the infinite realm now. The you that's here is an incarnation. That's the thing to realize. You're being restored so that Adam's body can be restored. The whole thing, the purpose of being here is to restore Adam Humpty Dumpty style one member at a time. Members of Adam's body becomes members of Christ's body. The first Adam and the last Adam become one, boom, back to the infinite realm. And that's the end of the ages of the ages. That's the end of time. But that, at, from our infinite realm perspective, because there's no such thing as time. From our infinite realm perspective, Satan murders Adam. Adam's guts are spilled everywhere. God restores Adam in an instant. Because, the, like I said, heaven and earth, all these ages, all this time passes, but not even a moment flickers on the clock in the infinite realm. That's the power of God whenever you realize we're standing in the infinite realm of God's courtroom and he's slamming the hammer down, everybody's judged, and boom, everything's fixed instantly. Thing is, we are frozen in that, mo in that moment of time. We're frozen in the time that God is deliberating over the sins of Satan and all the bad guys and of the victims. How, he's, they're, how they're going to be repaired, fixed, and then glorified. The rewards that, that Satan had are going to be given to Adam is what's going to, going to be the bottom line. And at the end, at the end, all the brothers are going to look upon Adam and realize that's the reason God made Adam was so that he could die. That he is the sacrificial lamb from the infinite realm. It's not God's word that's the sacrificial lamb in, in the infinite realm. Adam is. That's the reason God made Adam in the infinite realm. So Isaiah 53 is about Adam in the infinite realm. And about his 930 years here. Then John the Baptist, another skin for Adam, he walked, he carried the Holy Spirit baton to the Jordan River until he met Christ there and baptized Christ. And then Christ took the Holy Spirit baton and again completed Adam's mission because Adam could not complete his own mission. Only the Lord God that created him could. And that's who Christ is, the incarnation of the Lamb of God, the Lord God of Genesis 2. Okay, so for figure one, kind of lost my space, didn't I? On the seventh day, to create Adam as a singularity living soul, Genesis 2, 7, to then take E from his side. So I was above this. I'm going to go up here a little bit higher. We return to figure one of the diagram above to realize God's infinite realm is the only realm that's real. Heaven and earth are incarnations, okay, of the word. Christ and heaven. Consider that man was created in Genesis 1, 26-28 by God, where God who is is speaking, God who was, and God to come. They're the ones that are listening. The prophet and the priest of God who is. And he's, he's going to create man in our image of spirit, male, and water, female, and blood, who are the seed. Right after those first two are created, you're going to notice God saying, go be fruitful and multiply. The seed comes right in there. Then the Lord God, the Lamb of God, who is Christ, is working on the seventh day to create Adam as a singularity living soul. Genesis 2.7 Then take Eve from his side to be his helper. No, then take Eve from his side to be the helper. Okay. These are heavenly incarnations in the heavenly counterpart of the garden where with Procreation only taking place after Adam and Eve are driven from the heavenly garden to the earthly garden. Once the Lord God placed the two olive trees, that's who Adam and Eve are. They're the two olive trees of Zechariah 4, 11, and 14. In human skins. He places them in human skins, puts them on the earth, in the Euphrates Basin, which is the 
earthbound counterpart to heaven that's in the earth. So in other words, when Jacob's ladder, which extends from Mount Moriah, where Christ was crucified, when Jacob's ladder is restored, which it will be in the new earth, people will no longer die. Death went into the lake of fire. Remember? Revelation 20:14. There's no more death. So how are you going to go to heaven? Jacob's ladder. Everybody's going to walk to heaven. As you're ascending up that, not us, we're members of Christ's body, but the people that are then. They're called for this. They are going to serve David in his throne. And then they're going to be mature. He says, well, David says, looks at him and says, I can't do anything more for you. You've been doing this here now for 400 years or whatever. So it's time for you to take the walk. Big ceremony. Off you go. Up Jacob's ladder. At the same time, your angel half is coming down from the heavens. And you guys meet. Bam. It's like the marriage supper of the Lamb taking place in heaven. That's how people go to heaven in the future. Whenever that door, whenever the, from Mount Moriah, whenever that uh, Jacob's ladder goes up, people go up it. Then, they're, whenever they come out on top, they are looking the wrong way. They're looking in the opposite direction they need to. It takes them a minute to realize they have to turn around. Because, I mean, they see something, but they don't see what they, they can't even imagine. They turn around, and they see the Lamb of God. And they see the throne. They see everything. It's really, really cool. They didn't have to die to go there. They walk up Jacob's ladder. They're going to serve on that sea of glass with their angel half on the opposing sea for who knows how long. Until the end of the age. And then they're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. They're going to get inside and realize that... We, We've been there for a long, long, long time by then. So, Adam knowing Eve, having relations. It's like I jumped past this part. Oh yeah, I just got to the two olive trees. That's just Go, go read Zechariah 4, start at 11, then you'll realize that's Adam and Eve back in the garden. And it's also Elijah and Moses. And it's also the two witnesses of Revelation 11. These two witnesses keep coming and going on this earth. Everybody else, one time, if you're a seventh-day person. Adam and Eve are the only exceptions. They are the two olive trees. An accurate translation of Genesis 4, 1 says, And the man knew Eve, his wife. There's the Greek there, for, or the Hebrew. For, um, for good reason, that takes us back to God's infinite realm. And the time before time, where we are God's. Okay, Adam knowing Eve, having a relation, means Adam went into Eve. That is very near what has been going on in God's infinite realm between God's sons. You are a God, and I am a God. And we already know each other intimately from the inside out. Like we know all of our brethren as members of God's body. Not only are we members of God's body, but, like with Christ, we are also members of one another in God's infinite realm. Every God is created... Uh, by God, perfect, mature, and complete, with members already created inside of his body. We turn to the man, male and female, created by God in Genesis 1, 26-28, to realize these are ancient races, amphibious and reptilian, that evolved from the waters of Genesis 1, 20, long before any such thing as a mammal or primate walked this earth. The Chinese, the Aborigines, Native Indians, they all have Rh-positive blood. And they they generally are beardless, having evolved over hundreds of thousands and millions of years. These are the cousins of the suns in space that are terrestrial, having been around a long time. That are also beardless, sharing the same blood with their species. Sons of space were piling the chariots of fire that took Elijah to heaven. They are custodians of this planet, working for God as good guys. The key for understanding here is that these ancient races of the earth are members of Adam's body incarnate here. But they are incarnation but they are incarnations of members of Adam's body also in God's infinite realm, having been created in Adam on the day God made him. Then Adam's brothers in God's infinite realm began to incarnate inside of him for Adam to place them around the grand table and just the way he desired. The way we position our brethren in us works to change our outward appearance, which helps to distinguish us one from another. Some brothers uh, position their brethren wisely to ascend up the mountain of God. 
while some brothers are foolish and earn lower positions. Everything is going along just fine until the day God decided to keep a secret from his children, which raised the need to create the anointed cherub who covers. And I know that's not very happy. For God, for some reason, and I've battled with that over the decades in myself, I did not write one word for God to anybody for three years being angry about this right here. Until I finally understood the mystery of iniquity. I had to grow to understand the mystery of iniquity more to realize and that we had already done these things before, then all of a sudden, the light came on. And I went right back to work for God like I had been since I was a teenager. God, for some reason, had the need to keep secrets from the inf in the infinite realm before Adam was created. In fact, setting everything right in God's infinite realm produced the need for God to then create a sacrificial lamb that Adam represents. Read Isaiah 53 again, written in past tense to... Realize this is an account of Adam in God's infinite realm and Adam living 930 years under the God of this world. So, Satan is going about deluding, deceiving, tricking the sons of God, having access to all the secret passageways of the realm. God then sent Adam to do the same work of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ combined in the four Gospels as we continue doing things already done. Ecclesiastes, highly recommend that you read these over and over again. Oh, we are doing things over and over again. Yes, and read. This is probably the most informative three verses in the entire Bible once you realize what they mean. And it relates to the infinite realm, heaven, and earth. We continue to do things already done over and over and over again to replicate infinite realm events. Right here is where we stop and present your question again. This is commonly what I do. When you ask me a question, you've got to build a foundation before you can build a house. There's the foundation that you just got. Now, here's the question again. I was wondering how Satan anointed uh, the anointed cherub that covers killed Adam in the infinite realm. One sentence required all that foundation to begin to answer. Now, here, now we're going to get into the answer. Satan deceived Adam's brethren into carrying out his murder that is mirrored in the account of Herod and John the Baptist using elements that we can understand. Satan beguiled Adam's brethren into putting the incarnation of Adam in them in chains so that Adam could be dragged to the deepest, pardon me, dungeon. Herod invited all of the regional kings, represented, representing gods in God's infinite realm, who were seated around Herod's grand table. Herod, Herodias, and the, their incestuous daughter, they're all assigned a witness, all testifying for Satan in God's infinite realm, where Satan is holding all the cards. The daughter of Herodias does her dance and demands John's head at the insistence of her mother, which testifies about the actions of Adam's brethren in God's infinite realm. All of Adam's brethren had their brother's incarnation beheaded at the same instant which created the need for God to ask his word, go over there and make Adam inside yourself again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. See, that takes us back to the beginning. All of this other stuff happened before the beginning, before the creation of heaven and earth and the envelope of time and space. Okay. The earth is the first Adam. The heaven is the last Adam until heaven and earth are restored. So Adam, in God's infinite realm, can be restored one member at a time. So this is the diagram uh, from my book. And here you see Peter, John, and James standing on the Mount of Transfiguration looking at Moses, Christ, and Elijah. Now, what you're looking at is much more than meets the eye. These three witnesses represent the earth, and these three, or these three witnesses represent the heaven. Of Genesis 1.1. This is Adam. His spirit, his soul, his body. He's laying on the altar, head facing this direction. This is Christ on the altar. Think Isaac, Abraham and Isaac. Being laid on the altar. He's getting ready to be split in two. So they're both laying on the altar and they're both being restored one member at a time. The world and the angels. We judge the world and the angels 
Well, I probably should just be reading. Or so I'm going to say everything twice. The first two olive trees in the garden are Adam and Eve standing on either side of the Lord, the Lamb of God. Which, if you can make the connection between the Lamb of God in heaven and the Lord God, you realize they're the same thing, you're doing really, really good. Elijah and Moses, that's Adam and Eve, they're standing on either side of the Lord on the Mount of Transfiguration. Look to the right and realize the earth, the heaven, and the heavens are testifying for Adam laying on the altar with his head facing right. Then, look directly over and see the last Adam also laying on the altar with his head facing right. Both the first and the last Adam are being restored one member at a time. Humpty Dumpty style. Until the earth and heaven reach the ages of the ages, remade hundreds of times, to become one. Heaven and earth get up from their altars, like Isaac, to walk together back into God's infinite realm. Until both smile, looking at one another, to become one, passing through the veil, separating heaven from God's infinite realm. This marks the mirac miraculous moment when Adam's trailing foot is passing through the veil with his cloak as God holds heaven and earth combined to make them infinite in the flash of an instant. The only way anything can become finite, anything finite can, can become infinite requires the touch of God. It requires the hand of God. It's the only way. That's what God's doing. He's restoring all things. He's just using us part of the process. The final little sliver of, Adam's rema of Adam remaining in heaven then seems to explode into infinity, sending, a, sending shock waves through heaven and earth and time and space that produces Elijah who is to come. If you accept it, Elijah is to come. Matthew 11, 14. Sent into the distant past to begin the process of restoring all things as the prophet of Acts 3, 22-26. This is the one that Moses says is coming that the Lord God is going to raise from among your brethren that who's like me, like Moses, like prophet. He's like me, yeah, like Moses because he's Elijah. He's the guy only standing on the other side. He's the other olive tree. For the, for, uh, the reason everyone has been waiting so long for Elijah is because he is coming he was to come from the end of time and space. When heaven and earth become one. That is why Elijah is the most powerful created Bible character, excluding the Almighty, obviously, in God's living word. And why anyone refusing to heed his word shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. See, Elijah's voice, as he was to come, thank God who is, who is to come, the prophet of the Almighty. He is heaven and earth put back together again. The first and the last Adam from the end of time. When he comes back, he can have power like you cannot imagine. See, he's coming from the end to come back to the beginning of the restoration of all things. So the Nadi writes, Eating the tree of knowledge of good and evil was in heaven created. I said, please do me a favor and use either question marks or exclamation marks, but not both. That's confusing. I'm not sure if you understand something and you see it already or if it's something I need to explain to you and that your exclamation points are from the excitement of being told. I'm not sure. That's what I mean about my brain. It kind of works the way it works. One word can mess me up and make me think three, five different things in an instant. and It, it kind of jer jolts me around. Okay, that's confusing. Remember that everything Adam and Eve do here on the earth has already been done in heaven and already done in God's infinite realm. Christ's statement should be upgraded to say, I know how that sounds, I know it sounds, but when you understand the three witnesses and you begin teaching through the three witnesses, then you see the larger picture. Christ's statement should say, when it's upgraded, on earth as it is in heaven as it is in the infinite realm. So when you realize the truth of Genesis 1-1 is the key, then you're going to realize heaven and earth on earth as it is in heaven is as it is in the infinite realm too. Okay, In body, earth, soul, heaven, and spirit, God fashion. That's the man part, the man of God that I showed you in the first diagram. Okay, um, Can you expound on this topic? Um, then the main question is I'm struggling with is, is we are gods in the infinite realm. 
doesn't that does not that conflict with the garden and the serpent that beguiled Eve? I'm not making the connection or lack of understanding at this moment. There's no conflict here. There's also a larger teaching here. It gets me in tr into trouble. That explains why women are not to speak in church. So I didn't write 1 Corinthians 14, 34, 38. It's there. I understand why it's there. And I'm happy to explain it to other people, but I'm not kidding you. Some people get really mad at me when I, whenever I tell them. And why women are told to receive instruction in complete submissiveness. Satan did not beguile or trick those incarnate here in the world as men. But Satan did beguile those incarnate here as women. That's the important thing to realize. Those incarnate here as men were beguiled not by Satan, but by those incarnate here as women. Therefore, and it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. The serpent testifies for Satan, and Eve testifies for those God, those that should be gods, those gods incarnate here as women. Again, we are doing things already done over and over and over again, which means remaining silent breaks the chain of recurring events. Allowing the woman to use her man, the spirit witness, as an angel. That is why Paul teaches that women pray with their heads covered because of the angels. Because man is the spirit witness over the woman, like angels are spirit witnesses over man. The woman's covering testifies for the veil between the earth and heaven. And that's the lesson of Adam and Eve in the garden and how Satan actually murdered Adam by beguiling all the brethren to haul out the incarnation of Adam, place him on the altar, and to chop off his head at the same instant in the infinite realm. Then, uh, there's actually one fewer. There's 28 supporters. Nobody subscribed this week. There's 28 supporters because, believe it or not, on January the 3rd, on my birthday, then somehow or another, which is right in here somewhere, then I believe it was at Anna. It was a name right through here. Anyway. And uh, she wrote, and she, she signed up to the Black Star program, and I signed her up for the Mystery Report program without realizing it. So then she wrote me for threat assessment, and I was getting ready to write her say, wait a minute, you're a Mystery Report, but then I went and checked my paperwork, and I realized I made a mistake. It happens. Every now and then. So 28 members. And an interesting thing. Peter is a one of the supporters. He's uh, he's like number one, two. I have you guys numbered on the list here. There's Peter right there. And he is from where I used to live. Back in uh, the early 1980s. Back in, I lived in London. He lives over in the UK. And he um, he subscribed. He wanted my book. Shipped it to him. 3750 cost to send the mystery explain over there but peter didn't realize that his address and I, and I always write you guys i say please confirm your address because i don't want to send your books you know into the wild blue i want to send it to your your house and i wrote but apparently peter didn't get my message i waited and then i i said well it must be right it says verified and you know, on the paypal documentation it'll say unverified or verified so if you don't write me back and it says verified I feel confident I can send it. That that book went to, it went overseas to the UK. It came back. It took a month. And it came back, and there was little pasties on it. You know, so return to sender. Nobody this address and this kind of thing. So I wrote Peter, and uh, said I was. It looked like something was wrong. You know what happened? Peter passed away. What, what happened? This doesn't seem possible. But then Peter wrote me back and he goes, he just said he was sorry that he forgot, he didn't realize that it was, his address wasn't updated. So then he told me to uh, that his, the uh, the version that he has of my book is perfectly fine for him. And so I wrote and I let him know that because because Gary had sent a donation. And so now. What we end up this just happened to happen at this going through the same time. And guess what? Gary and Peter. You see how their names are right beside each other? They're beside each other for a reason because they both signed, they both subscribed on the same day. 
And so I looked at it and I remembered Gary writing about his daughter, you know, because he sent a donation that we could, you know, if there's an extra copy, you know, then, you know, I can, I can send it to my daughter. So that's without even taking off the labels. I just put another piece of cardboard over the top, taped it on there, that clear tape, and I sent it to Gary. So Gary got book number 55 for his daughter that has Peter's name on it. So I thought that was kind of thought that was kind of interesting. Then uh, Brian and um, Bruce donated to the uh, research. Appreciate you guys' help very very much. Going through a really rough time um, now, and um, I did get my uh, the final of the dentist. Finally finished me up yesterday. It's still sore from what they did, but guess what they did? Now they want to say, well, now you re you really need to do the implants. So that they got another eight grand that they want me to do. I, I'm not gonna do it. What? Because the, they told me. When I, when I, after I spend twenty thousand dollars, then all I have to do after that is have cleanings. I'm like, you're sure? They go, yeah. So as soon as I got done, and they said they're scheduling me for my cleanings now because I'm done, then they got eight thousand more. So I figure that's, you know, if I, I anyway, not going to do all that. But um, with the recent events, greatly, greatly appreciate you guys' help. And. Uh, so this is uh, how do we join, how do we receive the mystery reports, and the way you receive the mystery reports is just like this. So this is a 2020 Dropbox report, uh, mystery report newsletter. This is the Dropbox folder. And the first one back in 2019, see it's right here, number one, got five of them. This is when, it's, this is when everything started. These dates are a little bit off because I had to upgrade them but then you see this is the one from 24 the next one's going to be newsletter 6 that's the one I'm showing you that's going to be uploaded after I make this video and then it's right here so you have all this information in the Dropbox folder just waiting for you and at the YouTube channel the YouTube reports they're numbered 001002 001234 and so they're all in executive order. So there's a breadcrumb trail that's left for all of you. Whenever you finally subscribe, you're going to start just start at this newsletter. Read the opening report, just like the one I just read to you. This one's on the two Gospels of the New Testament, the two churches. There's an accompanying video, just like this video. And then you can follow the program along. It's only two bucks a month to be a newsletter subscriber. And then an extra, another two bucks a month, which is $50 per year, then you are going to get a different notification email from the, those that are newsletter only and you're going to be able to join us in chat every Tuesday you're going to have me as your tutor you can come to Mike ask your questions just like Najee asked here and then I'm on the hook to answer your questions for the whole year as a newsletter subscriber do you have access to all the newsletter two bucks a month more then you get access to the chat room every Tuesday night seven o'clock we'll be there tonight at seven o'clock right okay so that's how you access the information it's in the Dropbox folder I send you the link with all the instructions go to the website tutor chat is right here this is the $25 per year and in this Dropbox folder you'll have 57 newsletters like I'm sharing with you right now if you've never had a PayPal account you know what it is you go to the website just click on this all the instructions are right there it's really simple that took an hour and 23 minutes. Holy mackerels. These are my clarifying statements. Not going to be able to go through all of this information. But what I can do is take you over here. See, this is the website where I was showing you. We've got a little bit of updating to do this weekend when I get time. And this is the website that I recommend you go to, whether you're a subscriber or not. ChristianForums.com. See it? ChristianForums.com. This is the dispensationalism room. Naji is a dispensationalist. I cannot, I'm not a dispensationalist. I see the dispensations. And I was trained by Judy Bailey and by Catherine Smith and her husband. Who He was dead by the time they got a hold of me back in the 80s. But they were dispensationalists too. I like dispensationalists. I'm not a dispensationalist though. The uh, 
whenever we get down to, to the deep into the, the theology, we get deep into the interpretations, then you begin to see why. That these people that are here, see these dispensationalists only, I'm not allowed to write in there. And they'll tell you. They'll, when they'll look at my writing, I'll go, you can't be typing in here. You're not a dis real dispensationalist, are you? You're a fake one. No, I'm, I see the dispensations, but I'm, there are many of the, uh, there's 20 different types of dispies, and they, they divide things. They are famous for dividing things, which that's what we have to do. But there's only two veils in the scriptures. Some of them start our church back at Pentecost. And that's just wrong. Our church began whenever Paul was converted on the road to Damascus. He was the first member baptized into Christ's body. So that makes me a uh, Acts 9 dispy, if you wanted to call it. But then they have a millennial kingdom with Christ ruling on an earthly throne. Never happens. He rules in heaven. David rules on the earth. So... Um, this is where I recommend that you go. I can see boxers kind of waiting here for me. You probably see me in next week's newsletter giving uh, um, defending arguments. See, my opening post is here. This is dedicated to liberation on the difference between the four baptisms of the New Testament. So my opening post is here, and these are the guys that are either with me or against me. So if they come against me, it's a duel. That's what shows up here. Clarifying statements. There's... Here's the OP link. This is the topic. And this is the fellow right here. Nola Dad. Blind as a bat. This fellow here. Lots of knowledge. Unable to come to the knowledge of the truth. So this is... Uh, I, I really love it whenever people tell me what I'm misunderstanding. What I'm misunderstanding me. That I'm misunderstanding. And the thing that I don't realize. Like if I only realized this, then I would see everything their way. No, it doesn't work that way. Just give me your argument. And support it by scripture. And if uh, if it's good seed, it'll go in a good heart and God will make it grow. If it's not, so we don't change people people's minds through debate. It does not work that way. We sow seeds and God causes the growth if your heart is good. If you have good seed in your heart, someone comes along and sows good seed and God makes it grow. Boom, you see it. And you're not going to see it overnight, but eventually you're going to see it. But if, you're, if you're, the, the ground in your heart is bad, you can throw any kind of seed in there you want. It's never going to grow. And if, if you throw a ton of seed in there and you never water it, it's never going to grow either. So there's a balance. I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing for my uh, having, having trouble with the allergies. And just a little statement in here. I was telling uh, Eric. Eric interviews me once a month at a track hat night and I told him he was talking about the winter the weather and things I said I guarantee you that the air conditioners will be popping on in the middle of February watch and see down here in Florida where we're at you're talking about how cold the winter's going to be and sure enough this is the fourth year in a row now that the AC is popping on instead of the heater at night because well, I'm not kidding we came in last night and it was at twilight it was just, it was dark, and the, the the temperature in my truck it has a temperature, 80 degrees. We're getting out of the truck at on February the 10th at dark, and it's 80 degrees like it's the summertime down here in Florida. So here's the uh, I'm just looking at the clock. I'm not going to be able to go through all this. There's a lot more that I want to share with you. I want to I'll go back to the coronavirus a little bit too. Then uh, did did Adam? This is from the debate section. Did Adam sin out of love for Eve or because of wickedness? Here, this is uh, from ChristianForums.com. This is his post in full right here. He put one verse here. And so then this when when Naji had me write when he wrote me what was the last Tuesday or Wednesday whenever it was, and then uh, I wrote that article for him. Then it put, inspired me in my mind. I, I needed something for the debates. This was just this was uh, this is whenever the thing started, but I didn't answer it till yesterday. You see, so I was looking which one do I want to do. Well, it was Adam and Eve. Naji had inspired me to go lean over in that direction to describe more about Adam and Eve. So here I'm 
this is another grand this is a very good exercise so that this is what how you help control the narrative you 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 help guide this boat this mystery port boat whenever you come on and you support me and you ask questions there's nothing more I love to do than to help those for whom Christ died see things that's in God's word God's shown me and I want to show them to you and God made me pretty good at it the building of the foundation made me a builder a bricklayer I'm, I'm a journeyman vested journeyman bricklayer with a pension that I'll get when I get old enough right I mean my dad was a general contractor along with being a real estate salesman you know before he died and uh, his father was a general contractor and I imagine his father was you know I'm from a family of ministers and general contractors so to see the the, the, the Bible um, teachings that are on the foundation the foundation stone and building the house the building that the body of Christ is that all kind of works together I'm not gonna be able to go through all of this you can stop and read if you're a non non supporter and you can't get your hands on this newsletter but then uh, say I'm gonna start off at the beginning show you the three witnesses this breaks God's Bible code and then going and showing this is the diagram that I used that I just showed you from the previous report and to help him to see what the reality is about uh, about Adam and Eve in the garden really love going there day of the Lord the new heaven and the new earth this is for Brian and I go to this diagram a lot this shows how scripture Old Testament spirit blood water Pauline epistles the day of the Lord the kingdom epistles the Bible when you open it up lay it out looks exactly like the temple has veils and there are also veils within this holy place this whenever Paul is writing to the members of Christ's body and to the kingdom disciples at the church at Corinth two port city gigantic church he had those in there that were baptized the gospel of the kingdom and he had people in there that were members of Christ's body they were together and so he's addressing them together and it's particularly 11 through 14 the chapters first Corinthians full of water witness information there's an invisible veil there you cannot see members of Christ's body trip over those veils they can't they don't realize that they're there and they get their doctrine messed up because of it they get water doctrine mixed in with the blood anytime you mix water and blood what does it do it dilutes the blood can't do that you have to keep things rightly divided cut straight first Timothy 215 yeah that's what you know I hope to do and this shows the upward view what God's doing in the highest heaven the lambs doing in heaven of this creation and what's going on in the earth though so the thing that you're going to realize after a while in studying God's Word is that God's Word is written to be interpreted in different ways and it's written to teach a plurality of things and at the beginning of this presentation that I showed you about heaven and the highest heaven well there's a heaven on earth there's a on earth as it is in heaven from the highest heaven and there's a on earth as it is in heaven of this universe of Genesis 1 8 there's a on earth as it is in heaven and there's an on earth as it is in heaven so the, these there's a carryover in a plurality of things being taught scripture is a living document and it is four dimensional rather than just three it's going to take you into the next dimension it's a little it's we really need to all be mature before I can go any further into those areas but I want to you know take opportunity to inspire a little bit of thought uh, spiritual deliberation if you will inwardly and it inspires questions that uh, comes later in the timeline Again, I don't have time to go through all of this. This is Jacob's ladder I was showing you. This is on. It's difficult. It's difficult, but it's true. On Earth, see this is heaven of Genesis 1:1. See the highest heaven, and this is heaven of Genesis 1:8, where the Lamb is sitting. So there are things that are happening on Earth, as it is in heaven, with respect to heaven and the highest heaven then there are things that are happening on the earth with David on his throne in regard to what the lambs doing on earth as it is in heaven of Genesis 1 8 you see what I mean so there's a there's a mystery of Christ and there's God's mystery that goes up and down this way and God's mystery is Christ Christ Jesus 
So every little thing in these diagrams, this began from the first diagram that I showed you, those three orbs, God, heaven, and earth. Then when you turn them upwards and you begin realizing this is Adam and this is Christ and they're on the altar being restored and that these two are going to walk up and they're going to walk back into the infinite realm right here. There is so much to be learned by looking at a picture that's worth more than a thousand words. Once you realize. So again, I'm not going to have this in the future when I have more time. I'm not kidding you. I'm looking at my trailer and I'm looking at plywood where the carpet's been ripped out and I've not had the energy to, f to fix it. I'm sleeping on an air mattress because of this medical thing that we've had and just doing getting my work done and the Black Star work done, getting everything done. There's things on the website, the affiliate things I have not even had time to do. There's so many, so many things I haven't had time to do. So uh, just really flying by the seat of my pants and doing my best and with a doctor appointments and, uh, and, and everything else. So now, before we go, don't want this to run two hours possible. This, uh, this, this kid right here, he's pretty smart. I'd like for you to watch this video. He's talking about the different types of cells. And this is going to be a six-day, seven-day person. That's why it's here. The six-day people in the Orient have more of a uh, um, susceptibility, if you will. Pre pre they're more predisposed to be infected by this bug because of the types of cells their body make. It's just a little bit different than what you have with uh, seventh-day people. There is there are differences, and the um, the the thing to, to realize there is so much disinformation being put out, out about this, it's really difficult to run an investigation on what's happening. But there's so much fake stuff that's out there. But because on the one hand, you're dealing with a novel virus. They're saying you're the novel virus, the novel virus. This is the not, it's not the novel virus. This is already a mutated strain that they're dealing with over in China. So it's making it more transmissible between hosts and that I saw on the news this morning where it looks like some people are getting it through uh, the water system, which you wouldn't think would be possible. Um, let me see. Back over here. It's still 1,018. Let's updating it. This thing being updated is still on 1,018. As far as the number of deaths. And uh, there's only 13 cases here in the United States. Last one was in San Diego. So set on 12 for a while. Thing is, if this thing is here, this thing could easily already be here in our country, in the United States, I'm saying. I see there's more cases in Australia than there are in the United States. Well, you're closer. But this is how it starts. And this can be over April or May. Easily, 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 it can be over. Or this can become a global pandemic. We, I do not know. This is right up my alley. This is right in my area of expertise here in these uh these bugs and that's the that's the spectrum this thing could be nothing be over by april or may easy or it could turn into a global pandemic kill 150 million people we don't know yet we don't we still have not seen how this thing is going to find it's looking for the right host i am 100 percent confident and sure about that it's looking for the right host to mutate inside of and then be conveyed so to become a super strain something that is a tiger out of its cage now i'm not saying that we're there yet but we are wise to err on the side of caution and that's why the colloidal silver even if it's not for this bug for the next bug or just for the remember 80,000 people died in the united states last year just from the flu bug right not nearly what you're looking at here so why is it such a big deal right because this thing has the potential to kill a hundred times more if it mutates the wrong way if this thing goes sideways it's going to go sideways fast we can be in the united states in lockdown like they are right here people cannot go out of their buildings they are welding the gates shut closing the doors so people cannot get out they're trying to contain the bug if they have to kill people if they have to amputate the arm to save the patient that's what they're doing over there right now and china will do it they'll kill large swaths of people they'll, they'll kill entire villages They'll do whatever it takes to kill to stop this bug. 
the financial cost of what this is costing China is getting worse and worse by the minute. By the minute, this is getting worse. That makes the leadership there scared. And when people are frightened, they do crazy things. So I definitely recommend the uh, Cloto Silver. I recommend that you go over here and let, let Doug go to work for you. And it's just hitting the donate button. For every two bottles that you want to make six liters, and that's a bunch. Right? So it's $50 for every... You're not going to receive six liters in the mail. You're going to get two little small bottles that have concentrate with the instructions, and you're going to use distilled water. And you're going to put so much out of the little bottle into the water, and it's going to create your 10-part solution that you're looking for. And it's going to have all the instructions. Doug's really, really good at this. I trust Doug more than I trust any of those people that sell it out there. I know what he sent to me worked for me. So I trust him and the cost for 50 bucks. And, and that includes the, the, uh, the bottle, that includes the instructions, that includes Doug's time, my time, and the shipping and everything. This is really a public service that we're doing for subscribers. Okay, so if you're not a subscriber, please don't write to me and say, you know, send me, or, you know, whatever. Then all you have to be is a $2 a month subscriber, Mystery Report or Black Star. That's all you have to be. And then, happy to hook you up with Doug, and then he will go to work for you. And you'll be receiving um, the colloidal silver a solution, all the instructions in in as a package in the mail. And like I said, that that uh, that includes the shipping. More about the bug. I see why it's called a coronavirus. A coronavirus because of the crown, the crown features on the outside. The bat. They have some really strange eating practices. And there's more to this story, and there's a super long story in here. Is this the one? This is the one that they keep taking down off the internet. Somebody sent me an article from the web, you know, the archives. And I wanted to preserve it in one of these newsletters because it's being taken down and we're not going to have access to it again. So this is the newsletter right here. This is the, this is the article that's right here. That's why it's, it's so long. Why would you paste? Why don't you just say, go here and read? Because the link might not be any good. This link might not be any good anymore. This is the last place I look everywhere. He sent it from the archives. From, um, you know, the, uh, go, the, the Wayback Machine. Found one place, but didn't have any of the pictures. That was the only copy that he could find. And then I was able to find this one. And I click on it. I don't know if it's going to be there anymore. Because they're systematically removing information about this. This is from Mindy. This, she's the project clinical biologist. When I was sick, walking pneumonia a few years ago, 2017, she sent me the uh, nutrition things to help get my immune system supercharged and going again. So this is the information that she sent for you guys. I want to remember to get that this into the other newsletter too. Then uh, in an hour and 43 minutes, I just got down to the top stories. Um, more information. This is the pastor responding. Remember whenever I post you pastors, or I'm not necessarily agreeing with their doctrine. But this is a kind of a, uh, you know, this is a global emergency type thing. And this is updated just this morning for the newsletter. This is a good link. You want to save that link in your web browser. Then uh, signs of the times. What's going on in New York and California, New York particularly, right now, with these uh, these bail, they're letting p criminals just walk in the streets. People that are doing major crimes are walking in front of the judge, and the judge says, okay, and they're not requiring any bail. They're saying, okay, come back on such such date. They don't come back. They walk right back out the door, and they reoffend, And then they're back, and they're letting them go again, and they're back. The citizens of New York... The, the, the mayor and the governor are not with the people over there. And New York is going to come and become another California, worse than California. If it hasn't already become worse. You know, people 
This is what happens when the liberal left takes over and then they just throw the laws away. There's no, there's no rule of law. And then the lawlessness increases. The lawlessness increasing is exactly what Christ says. It happens at the end of the age. And people's heart grow dark. That's what's happening in many, many places. There is persecution, religious freedom, and the rule of law is being trampled under, the, under feet. And somebody's got to get these idiots out of office. So, and you're talking about liberal states where they just keep voting and putting people into office that are creating policies. They're creating laws like Pelosi over there. She wants the whole place to be filled with illegals. Illegals that are going to take your job. You, and you might be thinking, well, then I can hire the illegals and I don't have to use the expensive. Yeah, but then who's going to afford your stuff? Right? We're supposed to be working Americans, not people from other countries living 20 in a house. That's why you have people living on the street defecating on your sidewalks. But that's what's happening in these liberal states. Places where... Um, what's... Uh, Bernie. Places where Bernie is going to do well with these with these, uh, the radical places, and nothing that comes out of Bernie's mouth is possible. It's just the, the math does not work. But I disagree with the, uh, I am reporting on the, the uh, persecution. But I strongly disagree with the doctrine of Billy Graham and his son. This, the sinner's prayer is a false gospel. Just do this and Lord, got, got, pray the Lord will come into your heart. That is not the gospel. That's a false gospel. That includes works. And if they can get trick you into accepting one work to it, that's a false gospel. Be ready to be baptized into the body of the Antichrist. And you'll think you're saved, and you won't be. And you have the deluding influence dragging you around by the nose, slinging you around, and nobody can help you. Nothing I say will ever make sense to you. You'll think, I'm, I will be your heretic. I'll be your bad guy. Five Christian leaders, political commentators, respond to Trump's acquittal. Then the planned Texas border will cut off congregants from their church. The burden of uh, religious practice. Yeah, well, if they're Mexicans on the wrong side of the border, they need to get their own church. Americans on the American side, they go to their American church. Mexicans on the Mexican side, they go to the Mexican church. Everybody's going to survive. I was looking at, I even went on, in Google Maps and looked at exact location of all this. The place that they're talking about is some distance from the border. It'd be difficult for me to believe they're building the border that's going to have any influence on that, which made me conclude that it's the residents that live some distance from that church. And it said in the article that there were 20 people in the church. I mean, give me a break. Oh, 88 people? The land question is many 88 people. Anyway. No. Oh, normally we have about 20 attendees. Like this sounds like a like a lizard out in the desert that now you, you well you can't develop there because we're going to harm the lizard. I'm like yeah no we're gonna we're gonna develop there. The lizard is gonna survive or he's not. But if he's uh if he's destined to be uh, if his species is meant to survive, then building our building out here is not gonna affect that. And if it does and he's on the, he's hanging on a string anyway then that's God's will. That's why I look at it. Will the um, economics, the coronavirus outbreak derail the global economy? There is a definite chance of that. Definite chance of that. So we're in the time between the infection, original infection and the gestation. We're going through the gestation right now. We don't know how this thing's going to mutate. It could be that hurting up these people, that this is going to actually cause it to mutate if it has the right host on that boat. Seems to me that it's going to be in a third world country. It's going to be in Africa. It's going to be in India. The right host is what I'm talking about. Or it's going to be in the jungle, the Amazon. It's going to be some... It could be almost anything to be a reservoir, to be a carrier for this thing. And then you have the different DNA that reshapes mutation. And then when the thing comes out, and it's that tiger that cannot be put back in the bag anymore. So we're holding our breath and waiting for the next shoe to drop here in the United States. It's the best way that I can. Uh, to, I highly advise that you err on the side of, of uh, caution. 
here and go through all the winter time, you know, washing the hands and all that, the masks. And I saw a doctor that was telling the truth the other day. The mask, this thing goes right through that mask like it's not even there. It's possible that you can get some benefit from it. It's possible that you can. But uh, he was not even recommending masks to people. And that's what I was saying. It gives people a false sense of security. It's like having on a fire suit. You think you can get close to the fire if you have on a fire suit, right? You think you're protected, and you're not. Better just to go out there stark naked, and then you're afraid of the fire, and you stay away, than it is to have a false sense of security. So this is, this is a testimony, a little bit of uh, Nadi's background. Very interesting, too. And we're down to the testimonial part. So that's what I want to share with you guys this week. And um, when time permits, my plan is to begin making regular videos on here, taking Brian's article, Nadia's article, Trevor's article, and just make a video out of, out of it. This is the way it has to be for right now. Pardon me. This is my time slot that I have for for uh, this day. I've got this part done. Then I have Black Star work for Wednesday and Thursday. And I, at some in between or afterwards, then I, then I've got to get the situation in this trailer fixed because I'm losing sleep over it. So it's making me more ineffective. Well, I got one arm tied behind my back running around trying to do everything. Where if I, if I get the energy and go and get it all done, then I'm going to sleep good at night. Give me three or four days sleeping in my own bed. And then my body's going to start recovering. And I'll, I'll be able to get things done more efficiently. And have more time to make more videos and things. So thank you guys very, very much for your support. Get more information right here at the website. And find me over here. Usually find me here at ChristianForums.com on a Sunday or on a Monday. Putting together the information for this Tuesday newsletter that has to be wrapped up by Monday evening. And um, that's pretty much how it works. Remember chat tonight. I didn't open up to give you a view of it. But we're going to have chat tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Hope you're there. So again, get more information at the website, and I'll see you on the next report coming out. On um, Be sure to watch my Black Star YouTube channel, too, and for a uh, special report on the coronavirus. When it, I'm expecting something that's big is going to happen eventually. The shoe's going to drop, and then we're going to know where we're at. So thanks again. I'll see you on the next report, the next mystery report.